Okay, there he is. All right. Hi, guys. Can you make Gus co-host, Joanne? Because he's hopping around and I can't. I know what I can't do. I co-host can't make a co-host, remember? Oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. Hold on, Gus. I'm finding you. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Good morning. Um, make co-host. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Another amazing Tech Tuesday about follow today. I'm super excited because... We talked about it a little bit last month and I've had a little bit of time to play with it and I am so much in love with it. Like I can't wait to share what I did. So, uh, and you video doers are going to love this because, uh, now you can put your videos inside Fello to where people can see them. So anyway, but we're going to talk about fellow CRM. And, uh, you know, how you could use it. No, I don't believe you want to replace your CRM with Fellow. This is in addition to. So, um, as you guys know, we use Follow Up Boss and it syncs directly to Follow Up Boss. So, it's it's just making Follow Up Boss even better. So, um, anyway, but there are a lot of things that you could do uh, as far as diving into Fellow and kind of pulling out stuff and like making lists and being able to track and sending them video. So um, I'm going to let Gus start off and then um, depending on where he goes with it, uh, I want to make sure that I share with you like what the value emails that go out look like now. So, yeah. cause I know that um, this is something that we talked about that I didn't have done and, and it's um, it's ready to go. Now we have certain videos going out to luxury and certain videos going out to uh, everybody else. So well, then, good morning guys. For, yeah. Good morning guys. Thanks for having us. Love the shirt, by the way. Yeah. Up in the brand. Got to That's great. Um, what I what I thought I would do is for those of you uh, that are on here that are watching this morning that don't necessarily know quite um, about what Fellow does, um, I would just kind of go high little a little bit high level of, about what we are and who we are, um, and then I would talk a little bit more about you know you know how you can utilize this either as a supplement to your CRM as well as if you don't have a CRM in place currently but want to potentially have a system in place you know, some of the things that you can do uh, to create some structure around your existing database. So um, I'm going to just share on my screen and just show you a little bit of, you know, what Fellow is and who we are. Um, but first things first, kind of how we operate, guys, we are a database engagement tool that focuses on seller conversion out of that existing database. And how we operate is through this three-part funnel here. So think about us taking that existing database, diving in uh, and taking kind of a peek under the hood of what's going on in there. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by um, going down this three-part funnel here. First and foremost, um, and, and really, to be honest with you guys, this strategy that I'm showing you here can be done with or without Fellow. Uh, we just make it really, really easy for you to do that and put it kind of on autopilot for you. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to start by generating. And what I mean by generate is we want to identify homeowners within our database. It's really hard for us to create sort of any sort of intentionality around generating listings out of that existing database if we don't know where you know the majority of our database lives. And so Fellow helps by uh, attaching addresses to those contacts that we don't have home addresses for. We'll also give you different tools, landing pages, some different QR codes that we can bake into your marketing, your website, things like that to improve your conversion for sellers from any traffic that you're driving. So let's say you're running a social media campaign or you have a website built and you have a sell my home button. Do you have the right tool in place behind that or a spider web that is sticky for homeowner capture? Because historically, typically what we see is, you know, people just have a lead capture tool, but they're not capturing them as homeowners as they come into that database. And then they have to go chase and find out whether they're a homeowner later. 
Um, and once we do that, then we're going to nurture that entire database. So that's all on autopilot, a couple different automations, email and direct mail. We have a few different ways that we can drill down that automation strategy, uh, but everything's going to be white labeled and branded to you. I know that there's other, some other home value tools out there. Uh, but one thing I love about fellow is that everything comes from your name and face, the, the person that they know, like, and trust their trusted advisor within your particular market. Uh, and that's what, you know, helps improve you know, conversion and inboxing for, from uh, fellow emails versus other home value tools. And then what we're going to do is give you some different segmentations uh, and filters. And this is really where using fellow as a CRM is really going to start to kind of hone in is right at the bottom of this funnel here, where we can start to dive into some of these different filters and segmentations uh, to start creating some intentionality around if I'm going to prospect out of my database, or if I'm going to want to, you know, start calling people or starting conversations about listing their home, who do I need to do that to? And where should I spin my wheels so that I'm not wasting my time? Because uh, as we all know, time is money, right? So um, we're also going to give you some different data as well to create some visibility into how you're converting that existing database. Um, now, I know that that could have all seemed like a little bit of a, you know, Greek to some people. Um, I'm happy to, at the end, just, I'm going to throw this out there a couple of times. I'll put up a QR code. I'm happy to throw up and you guys can schedule a demo um, with me to go through the platform in full. Um, but is there anything you wanted to add to that in specific, Wendy? Yeah, no, um, no, I, I like it. And then I like, we just got an email from Lori, which is our, our, our girl telling us like, um, w there's 474 real sellers in my database <laughs> that haven't listed with us. So that's very sad. And that's not about the email though. The email she sent was like, this is where they are. Like, this is, you know, the average um, price point. This is the average this, you know, there are real sellers. This is what you need to be doing. The, they're over the 80% mark, you know, on, um, you know, so, so sh they like fellow works with you to figure out how to convert your database better. Uh, we're still in training. We're still on our training wheels, but, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's just like they're reaching out. They're like, okay, this is what we need to do. This is what it's looking like. So when they talk about nurturing, like this is this is huge because you need to not only nurture, but convert. <laughs> Conversion is uh, the ticket here, you know. Yeah. So out of the 474, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have some of those? So <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> One of the other things that I like to think about, and I use this analogy, and so for those of you that I've you know done some demos with before, um, I think uh, I see Dion, John on here, um, Suma, I think we may have talked in the past too, but you may have heard me say this, but what fellow is, is when you think about driving leads and generating more opportunities to our CRM or our database, guys, we think about Zillow and the, the realtor.coms and PPC and this, this service and what else, whatever it might be. Those are all vehicles that you've purchased over the years that bring you business or opportunities into your database. Fellow is not another vehicle. Fellow is the garage that you park these vehicles in. We tune them up. We get under the hood. We see what the data is. We see what their interest rate is, what their current equity position is, and where they're most likely to be. And then we drive those vehicles up to that garage door so that you or your team can drive those vehicles then to the listing appointment or to the closing table. So just so you guys know kind of where we're at as you're thinking about how you're building your tech stack and looking at this, that's what Fellow is in a nutshell. Um, but one thing I want to just kind of dive in and show you really quickly is just what it looks like to live inside of the fellow platform, um, kind of on the back end of things. So um, day one, what we would do, guys, is we're going to take those contacts that you send over to us. We're going to upload them into the fellow platform uh, and we're going to start attaching addresses to those contacts. And once we do that, then we're going to pull in our own data. So I'm just going to click on a contact here and show you. Um, we're gonna pull in national mortgage transaction and public record data to give you price history, equity position. Oh, it's not loading, hold on. There we go. To give you price history, equity position, where their current interest rate is, um, how long they've been in the home. We're also gonna show you who they last sold with and when. Uh, and then we're also gonna show you owner of public record. 
And so what this is going to do is this is going to help create some intentionality around your database. And when I get into the segmentation, this is all going to make a lot more sense. But what this is going to do too, is this is going to show you like, okay, of the people in my database, here's where they're at. I almost like to think about this as an air traffic controller, right? There is, you know, there's a lot of different things at a lot of different points, but we want to focus on what's about to land and what's about to take off. And so the data that, um, you know, Wendy was mentioning about this is we're also going to show you what we call our real sellers report. So this report that I'm showing you here is what's um, listing within your database of those contacts that you own, that you've purchased, that you've put sweat equity into building that are listing, whether that's with you or with someone else. And so in this report, this purple color that you see here is what's listing with other agents. And this peachy orange color is what's listing with you. Now, this team that I'm showing you in specific, um, if I hover over this, I'm looking at September of last year. In this database alone, 18 listings went to market and none of them listed with them. So now what we can do is we can actually dive in and double click. We recognize if you're a team leader, um, you know, we can identify what agent owns what lead within your CRM and where did they maybe drop the ball? Or if you're, if you're just a solo agent, you can still identify, okay, let's look at, you know, Bradley, for example, here's how many times he submitted. Here are some common denominators for these people that listed in that particular month. If we pull up these top five, we're looking at Mitchell here. His interest rate was 7.62. Danielle, her interest rate was 7.44. Heidi, her interest rate was 6.64. There's some commonalities there between those people that are listing in our database, right? So now as we're looking at ours, we have that data on our contacts. So now we can actually go and sort this out. Okay, I wanna find everybody who has entered into our database and I'm gonna create a segment of over 6%. Now, as you're looking at this and some of you may have built really substantial databases over the years of, you know, 15, 20, 80,000 leads if you're when if you're windy, you know, these this is there's a lot of opportunities here. We just need to go find a way to create some intentionality around it. So this database I'm showing you is 37,000 contacts. There's 441 people. As I'm if I'm prospecting, if I'm an agent, this is now a lot more bite-sized and palatable than looking at a database of 37,000 people thinking where the heck do I even start? Or even if I was looking at a database of 5,000 people, you know, there's there's only a certain number of hours in the day that we can allocate to prospecting. We want to make sure we're doing it in the right way. Um, so with that, um, you know, the data piece is really going to start to allow you, and even for those of you who are currently building a database, who are um, maybe have a smaller database but are wanting to grow yours, what this allows you to do is start to create some organization. Um, you know, and I always kind of joke with people, I'm like, let's Marie Kondo your database a little bit. So go into your database and let's start to create some filters so you know that you're not spinning your wheels in areas that you don't necessarily need to be. So, hey, I don't service anyone outside of, you know, a certain zip code or a certain county. And I don't have a, you know, really a, a huge desire to send out referrals. Okay, awesome, no worries. Here's the people that are out of your state. And let's go in here and we'll select that list of people. Now we can go clean up your database and identify these are the people that, you know, even though I have spent time, money, effort, do I want to send them in a quick email blast about, you know, referral opportunities or whatever it is, or do yeah, I want to just, we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or do we want to, you know, just completely remove them or whatever it might be. We can start to create some, some intentionality here. Um, maybe you have a focus on some sort of, you know, uh, loan type, or you have a, a, a seller financing opportunity with a lender in your area. Maybe you want to see everybody with an assumable loan type. So I'm going to sort everyone with a VA and an FHA loan that I have in my database, right? We're really starting to create some intentionality here and target um, the right people with the right messaging. Um, and so what that means is, is we're going to take this segmentation and these filters, and we're going to start to hone in on the messaging that they're getting. Uh, and this kind of leads into what I what Wendy was mentioning of being able to show the right messaging to the right people at the right time. And so what she was talking about is we're sending out an email every 15 days to that entire database, but that email isn't a one size fits all. 
Um, you can't do one size fits all with seller marketing. It has to be unique to them and their home and their journey, right? You don't want to show a multi-million dollar seller a $200,000 seller's call to action, right? We want to show them the right messaging. And so what Wendy has done within her account um, is gone into her dashboards that they see. And maybe I should um, go back and show you first. We're going to take that entire database and roll them into an email campaign that goes out twice a month. They're going to get an email that looks a little something like this. Um, it's all going to be white labeled and branded to you and your brand, but it's also um, all going to be coming from our servers branded as you to keep you out of that Google jail, like Wendy mentioned before. Um, and so when they click on this see my home button, What's going to happen is they're going to land into a customized dashboard that's going to look at look a little something like this. And this is where they're going to see home estimates that we've promised, as well as a bunch of different content that's all uh, white labeled and branded to you and your brand that you can completely customize. So for Wendy in specific, she wanted to show only people that have a value of luxury certain videos. So on her dashboards, what she did was is she went in and uploaded videos, right? So highlighting the uniqueness of your luxury real estate with Wendy. She embedded her video and she created a filter so that anybody over 800,000 and has clicked between four and eight times, so five to six times on their dashboard, only sees this video. Same thing. I, I did that right, because I did, okay, so I did four, like when the fourth time they click on it equal to four. And yeah. then, and then the eighth time they click on it, because because I did this late in the game, and I feel like everybody has already clicked on their email four times, right? Okay, they already did it twice a month. Yeah. So, so I decided to kind of repeat the videos uh, one yeah. more time, uh, just in case they missed the first four times. But anyway, uh, we did um, our uh, Michael Jackson home, like okay. so. Michael Jackson home goes out and I said, see how I told the story about this amazing home. This is what I can do for you. So that was my messaging out to them on the first one. Yeah. And, then, um, and then like this, you can shop online. That is like going to my other audiences, everything under seven ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, and these are all like, they're just going to have the one video at a time. Correct. So every time they click on it, right, then they're going to get a different video. And so. we can see here. So let's look, for example, um, someone with a property value of, I don't know. Yeah. yeah so go to contacts and go to, um, uh, let's say, Jim Meselik. Okay. Sure. So he should... Um, Oops. So this is Jim's dashboard that we're pulling up here. Wow, my internet is not operating today. Maybe click preview. Oh. Uh, so now, hmm. with this in specific, um, and we can look at Jim um, here in a second because he may have only not clicked into that more than four times. It looks like he's only, that's uh -huh. why. So um, with that, we can go in and adjust that. Do you have anybody else that you know? Like, um, I know, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's okay. I can just go in and sort by ABM too. So we can find people that have property ABM and number of clicks. Let's see here. I know I just did it this morning. So would they be showing up? Potentially. Let me look at Gary here because he's going to see something. Of course, I did my homework before class. No, that's okay. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I'm so yeah, and this could, it could have been since the 
what we implemented the filter on could could have been the piece of it as well too so um, oh, because but, I, I started it this morning and nobody is yeah any of yeah okay. yeah so i'll be, and i'll just show you an example too that i have in place um so our founder ryan does uh, a, a certain cash offer program with his team but he only wants to show that cash offer to someone with uh he doesn't want to purchase anything over 750. so anything that comes in under 750 in his dashboard sees this cash offer focus video in this language here anything that comes in over that sees this luxury focus language in this video here so what we're talking about here is tailoring the dashboard to that particular contact so that they see that messaging that's relevant to them if that makes sense um so Wendy, we can dive into this and kind of see what you know that looks like for those particular contacts that we just tested um, but ultimately the goal here would really be to go and show that messaging to the right person at the right time. Right. Yeah. We took way. out the, we have the cash offers set up as well. And we took it, you know, we just have it showing to, I think everybody under 600,000. Okay. I, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just because, uh, yeah. And they're, they're clicking on them. So, I mean, it's Love just, it. You know, it's it's what people are looking for. You don't know what they're looking for. Do they right. want a, an easy cash offer? Do they want to learn <laughs> about how you market homes and get top dollar? Like they're going to learn all of it just from the reports coming up. Exactly. And their home value. And I like that the home value isn't just one value. It's split and it tells them where they're getting the information, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I'll pull that up and kind of explain yeah, that a little because bit too. You know, I don't want people to feel like that's what I think their home is worth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's literally, um, yeah, this is the home value one, but like I have the other one set if up. If you want to pull one up, you can pull it up. Too. Okay. Yeah. So if I share here, um, let me go back here. So if you go to, oh. right or there oh i gotta go over here sorry preview dashboard so see how it has core logic and then yeah so it it doesn't say that this is what i think their home is worth this is what right. those um companies think their home is worth so yeah i like that's that the, that's okay. one thing that we've recently Im implemented into our uh into our home value the dashboards just because we want to remove that perception because there is a lot of friction sometimes of like hey you get a call my my home value is too low or you know whatever it is well now you can say hey totally get it those are just a few models that we have in place to start to start the conversation about home value tell me a little bit about why you're interested in learning more about it and open that conversation that way so um I'm not sure. Do you want to dive in? Do, does anybody have any questions in specific um, that we could kind of go through? I know I saw a few people coming through in the chat. Is there anything else you want me to hit on there, Wendy? Uh, yeah. So um, Sarah was asking about Lofty. Okay. Uh, if it integrates with Lofty. We, so we do. We have a two-way integration with Lofty via Zapier. So we integrate with most CRMs with Zapier. Um, Boomtown, if you have Boomtown, is through a platform called RealSync. Uh, and then Follow-Up Boss, we have a native integration. What does that look like on Follow-Up Boss? Yeah, good, good question. So um, within the, each individual contact, um, it's going to be a card that's embedded into... Um, Do you want me to open mine up? Yeah, yeah, if you want yeah. to from the Follow-Up Boss. I have a screenshot, but it might be better to open from Fub. Yeah, so... We love it because it literally looks like uh, you, you don't even have to, um, like anybody that comes through with an address has this. So we'll just pull up me, here's my address. And then we we automatically have a fellow link right oh, here. Oh, awesome. Okay, so, cool. Uh, and then when we come through, let's see, did I click on the link? I should have clicked on the link. I send myself a lot of stuff. Yeah, but uh, anyway, when when you click on it, it will have all the details right here in the middle. Gotcha. So, um, uh, Wendy, are you using um, Real Scout for like sending properties? I am not. No. Okay. The I am not. I ask... we, we use KB Core. Okay, because the only reason I ask is that um, like on Real Scout or and I'm assuming maybe it'd be like KB Core too, but 
like, you know, with these like home search sendings, like they're also saying like, hey, do you have a home? And like, they're trying to prompt for uh, like home valuation through their platform. So I was just like wondering if you guys have experienced that with uh, just like any confusion. Uh, no, um, yeah, I know that we don't use home scout. We went from home bot to follow. Mm -hmm. So, um, but this is, this is what it looks like. So new home value from follow, and then it has the email. This is the address estimated value. So all of it's right here, or you can click on the fellow link and it takes you right to, you know, their platform here. And then and you can go here and see what their dashboard looks like. Gotcha. And two, Wendy, one thing, and I, I'm this is actually just recently that we just rolled out. So you're going to love this. We actually have a card that we can turn on on your FUB dashboard. So all of the fellow information lives within that card, within that particular contact. So I'll have... Lori, get in there um, with you, Wendy, and make sure we get those turned on for those two. So you'll see over here how it's that card and it says powered by Velo. Oh, cool. Yeah. Have our so then we won't need to do just the custom URLs and everything. It's everything's actually going to live inside of this. We have that now direct integration set up too. So me too. Yeah. Me too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Turn Deanna on too. <laughs> okay. You got it. <laughs> Love it. Is that just okay. going through the settings in follow? Turn that on. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I can send over John and and I can send over uh some links. We have a tutorial video on how to turn it on. Um, okay. I'll send that over for you too. Okay. And you could. I'll send that over to you too, Deanna. Perfect. Yes, I noticed there was the ability to go in and edit the house value, and so um and so when I am invited to go over and do uh you know feet on the ground valuation. I come in and edit it then in fellow. Yeah. Will fellow now keep up with the new um the new valuation or will it continue to trigger you know what was initially there? So what's going to happen is is it'll automatically adjust based on those values that we're pulling the data from, but if you go in and manually adjust it, we're going to leave it at that value that you've adjusted it at. Um, you'll still see the changes in the back end of what CoreLogic and Adam are pulling for values, but that one value that you've determined, that would that would be like maybe a place that I would go and edit if they're like right out of the gate. They're like, hey, I want to know what a number would be if you were going to come list my home yeah. tomorrow. That would be maybe when they're like a little bit lower in the funnel because that's going to stay what it's at until um, until you you know either list it or uh, mark them as sold or you know referred within the platform. And I, I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. So it's really just the algorithm, the standard algorithm based on um, zip code, square footage, um, how yeah. far out do you guys go with those valuations, mile? <laughs> Um, yeah, so the CoreLogic and Adam are the two main data sources that we pull those values from. Um, and so wherever CoreLogic is coming from um, with those, CoreLogic is going to be the top AVM model that we're pulling from, but Adam is another one. We're also adding in uh, Quantarium and Collateral Analytics, which are two more data sources that will be coming in uh, within the next couple weeks, hopefully. So our clients will have four different uh, third-party value models to choose from to show their clients. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. So, Gus, I, you guys aren't doing emails yet. Um, Wendy, maybe you can comment. What's the best way to get emails for your database, the leads that are coming in without emails? Uh, yeah, so we use white pages. There's so many different programs you can use, but we use whitepages.com just because it, it looks, um, you know, it looks... I mean, it works pretty good. Um, we also, when we pulled our 10 luxury neighborhoods out, we used Mojo Neighborhood, um, um, the neighborhood feature inside Mojo. Uh, and we're actually getting a ton of hand raisers in those neighborhoods, which is kind of cool because obviously they were all the neighborhoods I was trying to connect with. And I just did it for the audience, right? So that I could retarget them through audiences. But now they're raising their hands. It's kind of cool. Um, one thing that we can do to help kind of bridge that gap in communication for you guys as well, uh, is through our postcard mailing feature. 
Um, and what we're able to do is send out postcards to addresses that we don't have emails for. Each of those postcards will have its own unique URL and its own unique QR code on it. Um, so that when someone enters and scans within that, that particular postcard, it's gonna capture that information and capture their email as well. So within the, the plan that you're on and the credits that you're utilizing each month, we'll be able to send out postcards and bridge that gap in communication too. Let's say even if you were doing just like your own you know, proprietary mailer with your own, you could go in uh, and create a landing page and use that QR code for those landing pages to get those scans and things like that. Um, Crystal, you have a question. Robin, did your question get answered? Oh, yes, sorry. Okay, I'm just a my hand. No problem. Crystal, you have a question? I do. Um, so I just saw some of my contacts come in and I know I talked to you a little bit this when I signed up last week, but a lot of our homeowners up here are second homeowners. So I'm yeah. getting all of their houses like Texas and Idaho and all these other places. So I'm not necessarily getting the house that they own here. Is there a way to tweak that or see all their property? I mean, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, so yeah. they can manage. Wendy, do you want to hop on? I know that you've come across Yeah, those. so uh, we do a lot of marketing to California because that's where people come from. And so, um, you know, when we're marketing our luxury properties over to LA and San Diego and San Francisco, right? So now we have them in our database, right? Because they were interested in a luxury home here, uh, but they own property there. So when they're raising their hand, wanting to know their home's value over there, guess what? I'm sending them to an agent and I'm making money. So, so I love that. I love that. But they also have this... Um, program called what is it called that finds the addresses for you uh, the address enrichment yeah enrichment yeah so we're uh we're taking advantage of the enrichment because <clears throat> i mean we've already got a seller from it and it was a past client and i didn't even know he owned another house on that street <laughs> That's how good I am. Anyway, so it's definitely worth it to see it. I mean, one one guy just came through and he owns like 23 properties. So, I mean, I feel like the more they own, the better, right? You can get them an agent here. You can get them an agent here. You can be their agent here. You know what I mean? So I'm seeing all of their properties because I'm seeing like one. So maybe I'm just not getting in there enough. Right, so we're okay. using enrichment. So it's, it's another feature that you can turn on and enrichment actually finds all the addresses that people are that own, you know, because I'm pretty sure this came from like my neighborhood search and I had addresses in there like incline village, but when they're showing up in fellow they're showing up with different addresses like I didn't import them, you know, all my people for the most part had addresses I think attached. I don't know. So th they also have the ability to manage multiple homes as well. And so for you, um, you know, if you're saying, hey, I had an address within my database within Incline Village, but I'm seeing that you entered an address within Texas, did you know that you can actually manage and see the, and track the values for multiple properties, even across the country? Um, that could be a conversation that you'd be able to have with that particular client too, and give you an excuse to pick up the phone there for them. Um, but they do within the fellow dashboard, they can actually manage multiple homes there as well. It's just a matter of going and either getting them to confirm that address and find them or getting them to opt into to showing you the other different addresses as well. And I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if Colorado, I, you're, cause you're in Colorado, right, Crystal? No, I'm in or, uh, Cal California, or, Nevada border. So I'm in Okay. This. Gotcha. So I'm not sure. Do you have access to forewarn or anything like that? Yeah. Okay, so you could forewarn that contact and find the other properties and put those properties into that particular Manually? contact as well. Okay. Yeah, yep. the address enrichment feature will help with that. Um, like I like we mentioned, put it on autopilot. But um, if you wanted to to do it that way, you could do it that way too. Is that through Fellow that enrichment program? We do have an address enrichment. It's like an uh, automated skip tracing. It is through Fellow. Yep. Um, otherwise, we we do have a ton of people that use you know the forewarn or something like that and put in addresses that way as well. Yeah. So, um, real quick, real is, quick. Yeah, how much is that feature to have the um, enrichment? Um, 
it, it's depending on the, the plan and the credits that you have available. So we can connect on it um, after this and we'll go through what that looks like for you. Okay. So, so these are the lists that they have set up for me, um, which I love. So like this is high propensity right here. So these are, sure am I not sharing my screen? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see it. Sorry. I just stopped oh. sharing mine. I was going to let you, you see it. I see it. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay. There, there it is. Uh, anyway, so the high propensity, I really like that. Uh, so you can click on that and it's going to pull up every, I would think everybody over 60. You can actually uh, go over here and create another filter to where it's like the, um, the AMV. Oh, sorry. AVM, I'm dyslexic, uh, is greater than 1 million apply. So then here's all of these, right? Luxury homes that have high, high scores. You can even do like this, greater than 80, right? Apply. So now we only have 1,500 records, but you could even look on a map right here. So let me close this guy, click on the map, and it kind of shows you like where these properties are. Isn't that cool? So I can really see like where I need to be honing in on. But um, anyway, so I really like I really like that map feature. Uh, kind of one thing we are adding to um, when you look at this map feature here. One thing that we're adding coming in the next probably quarter or so is a farming feature uh, that we're building into the platform that will help uncover new prospects that are living within that database there. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be amazing. Uh, then you have expired stuff like that, but these are different segments uh, that they set up for me too. Uh, skip trace enriched properties. So this is what we were talking about, Crystal. So like these are all, they have found 4,418 more homes in my, in my database. So they have added all of these addresses to follow up boss, right? So uh, yes, you can use a skip tracing tool, but this is so much easier. Anyway, um, but I love that. Uh, active on their dashboard. I like this one so I can see, you know, who is most active on their dashboard. Uh, financially positioned, selling timeline is less than six months. You can even search for that. Uh, high propensity luxury. This is the one I just kind of filtered and uh, we created a filter. Uh, high propensity, 60 plus, and then a sweet spot. This is the one they just um, they just made for me. Sweet spot propensity plus um, square footage plus form AVM, like they kind of created all of this based on the sellers that are selling in the database. So like they they did they did the math and now we get to um, kind of see these are ones that haven't went back to market or haven't went on the market, but they match whatever is going to the market. You know what I mean? So so it's kind of cool. Uh, there's just so many different features that you could look at to, um, you know, figure out who you're going to call. And then you got to kind of make the calls. So Christian. Um, this is great. I love it. Because I was always wondering about Fellow, but I use HomeBot. And uh, yeah, anyway, I was just uh, <clears throat> wanting to clarify. So you get the list from Mojo and then you like can upload the ones with emails too? Or... Yeah. Yeah, so what I did when I was like tackling luxury is I, I signed up with Mojo and mm -hmm. then um, I went in and circled well, the radius of the neighborhoods, right? You use the neighborhood search and then you you bring them in and make sure that they're synced to that follow-up boss, right? So yeah. Mojo syncs to follow-up boss, follow-up boss syncs to street text. And that's how I created audiences that I can um, rotate my videos through. So oh, that's why yeah. I did it. But knowing that we have it all in there, they're like getting the emails too, you know? Gotcha. So it's kind of cool. And the mm -hmm. better thing is, is that the buyers that are sitting in our database with just name, email, phone number, now they're turning into sellers because they're getting the email. Do you want to know what your home is worth? And they're like, yeah. yeah. 
Here's my so address. All the all the leads you are getting from Street Text, the like list of homes in X neighborhood for X yes. price. Yes. Now we're getting the address. Oh my yes. god. Genius. I that know. Is, it's huge. Is, it, so it, it, okay, so then just to clarify, sorry, I had to like mute real quick. Someone was talking to me. But um, so you pull from Mojo, it syncs to follow up boss, follow up connects to uh follow up boss connects to fellow, fellow. and they're getting the emails. Yeah, yeah. So anything that comes this, into I can do that follow quick. up boss syncs to fellow. All right, dope. Yeah, yeah. Dion, good morning. Hey, how you doing? So my question was really about um, I in your autom um, the automation. I'm only running the what's your home worth. Is that the only email you're sending out? Okay. So, so if you go to fellow. Uh huh. Because yeah, yeah cause we can't see and under uh, your there's, marketing. There's actually there's actually two emails that go out right. Uh, one, one is home value and one is market report. Correct. So um, it, we have, we have, we have two different renditions of an email. We call it our home value digest series. And that's an email that goes out twice a month that sends to that entire database that's centered around home value. But, um, we also have some different automations, cash offer automations, things like that. If you wanted to turn some of those on Dion. So, um, I can, I can reach out and set up a time to chat and go through, um, some of those different automations that you could potentially want to turn on and see here. Yeah, because I am kind of lost, I have yeah, to admit. Okay. No, that's okay. That's what we're here for. So um, I'll, I just wrote a note down. I'll reach out after this and we'll get some time on the calendar and we'll go through a little strategy session and get some of those turned on. And if there's anybody else that is using Fellow right now, guys, that is, either just raise your hand or put it in the chat um, or just shoot me an email or a text and we'll get some time and we'll make sure that you guys are getting what you need out of it. Oh, here comes the farming. I see it. Sorry. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's My coming ID in. Takes over. Yep. <laughs> Isabel, good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, quick question. Um, does Fellow also sync with um, Go High Level? We do. Yep. We have, we have a integration with them via Zapier as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You can do anything with the Zap, but I love the direct integration with follow-up boss. That's so nice. Yeah. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw this up here while we finish answering a few more questions here, guys. I just have a QR code to scan. If, if there's any of you that haven't learned more or you want to dive in a little bit deeper, um, you can just scan this code and, um, schedule a demo with me over the next um, couple of weeks. We have some good promotions in play for Wendy and her Tech Tuesday um, as well. So um, happy to make that happen for you guys. <clears throat> yeah, Herb, so yeah, fellow, it depends on if you're an individual agent or a team. Uh, so there's that. And then yeah, how many, um, how many people are in your database? So, and, and I thought, so pretty much everybody that has an email is connected to fellow. So there's a whole bunch of people that didn't have emails that aren't, uh, but you could obviously skip trace and get those in there. But, um, and then I thought about, you know, leaving all the California people out, you know, like anybody that doesn't live here, leave them out. But when I started thinking about the referral opportunity, like that's just, that's just insane. So that's, that's free money right there. So um, anyway, so I left them in uh, that way I can, you know, send business across the country. So yeah, cause we, we do a lot more um, marketing than just to California. So love it. But um, does anybody have any questions? Jamie, I have follow because of Wendy, uh, but my launch meeting is this Thursday with Sarah. I'll assume. Uh, yes. You will, you will be uh, structured correctly. I've met with them like probably four times since since I came and they said I can meet with them whenever I want. Uh, so you just schedule a time, but they've been really helpful in answering all my million questions <laughs> um, and, you know, getting me all set up for success. They also have um, script stuff uh, that, you know, tools that you can have because, you know, you're not going to, these aren't people that are like ready to sell right now. I mean, they might be, they might be, 
but they might not be. So uh, they have some good scripts that you can talk to them um, about. Uh, so once you get signed up, they'll send you those. Um, yeah. and if you do have a team, they'll meet with your whole team. They met with my team, got everybody started. And that's the coolest thing I like is that, uh, when we assign someone, um, you know, to one of our team members, uh, it's their information that's going out. So I, I love that instead of my information going out, um, because, you know, as a broker owner, it was all about me, but now, you know, that I'm here, I want everybody to have their own stuff. So um, it's really cool. I like that. One thing I was going to share too, um, just drop this for exclusive for the, for the Tech Tuesday crew um, was our founder, Ryan, um, who owns and operates a team over in Cleveland. Um, still to this day, he used Fellow to do a 30 listing appointments in 30 days challenge. Uh, and he officially set or all 30, I think he set like 31 listing appointments in 30 days out, out of his database using Fellow. And he recorded everything, packaged it up into a playbook with scripts and templates and different videos. Um, so if you want to, um, if you want access to this, uh, I'm just going to drop my email in the chat here uh, and just go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll email you over that um, here this morning. And I think I got that, but can you send it to me again? Yeah, yeah you got it. It was probably 300 emails ago, but I, I know <laughs> I see that and I was like, oh my gosh, the whole team needs to see this of how they did it because obviously, you know. It, there's a there's a system there's a system For sure <laughs> but yeah, yeah at least you know who to go after because that's my biggest problem when you have eighty six thousand leads in your database you're like who do I talk to like you kind of mm -hmm. have this um you know fear of <laughs> like I don't even want to start I don't even know where to start but now we yeah. know where to start so thank you Deanna <laughs> has been using fellow um how are you doing over there Miss Number Seven. I'm killing it. I know, I'm right? Killing it. Um, I, love it. I love it. I think it's very easy to use. Um, I actually was just on a call with Lori before I jumped on this. Um, so I'm just kind of like right on the tail of where Wendy's at. So I'm watching her and then I'm learning from her and then also getting, I think, acclimated maybe a little bit faster just because of Wendy's lead and then these other things. Um, but I think it's amazing. I find this program makes me more confident to make the phone calls compared to some of the other programs. I feel like I know where they're at. I feel like they know to expect my call. They raise their hand so well. Um, so yeah, I love it. So cool. awesome. I was just going to ask um, Gus where yeah. we can look for like webinars and stuff for training. Is there a calendar? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, you can either just reach out directly to Lori, Deanna, or um, we have um, what we call our fellow academy. So um, I'll pull this up. If you go to our website, and, and any of you can use this, whether you're a fellow user or not, we are big on contribution. Um, obviously, we would love to have you as part of the family, but um, we want to help and make sure our agents grow. So even if you're not in a position right now to be part of the fellow family, feel free to use this. If you go to the fellow website, and hover over resources here and go to Fellow Academy. You'll see all different courses, master classes, basics. Um, our founder, Ryan, has a master class that he just finished, um, but there's a ton of different resources here on how to get um, the most out of the platform, but also just how to scale your business through listings. So, cool, awesome. thanks. You got it. Uh, can you put the link to? that one page that you just yep. showed in there oh is that it did. the academy yep. okay yep, just did yeah all right cool save save that you guys maria good morning good morning the question was actually to diana uh, using fellow you mentioned you feel more confidence of calling people why is that would you care to share with us what is what has happened in the sequence that is kind of opens more doors for you to make more calls um, I like the fact that the information is just like very organized for me to look at. I mean, it tells me, it can tell me what interest rate they were at. Um, it just gives me a lot of information to be very prepared before I make the call for any possible objections. Like, well, I'm at 3%, why would I sell, um, et cetera. Um, 
and it they they they've gotten information and very matter of factly raised their hand and and put themselves in my bucket of people to respond to where other people it's more like well i was just clicking on a facebook ad and i didn't really mean to for you to call me and i'm just poking around or whatever this just feels very very intentional um and very direct Okay, so this is more of them showing, uh, raising the hand, showing an interest. What do you mean when you're saying uh, they're showing 3% interest, like specifically in the ad is what you're doing? So when you, on the dashboard, when you get that person's information and it shows their property, it also shows their purchase history. So it gives you okay. the information of how long they've owned the property, what interest rate they purchased it at, if they did a refi, et cetera. It just gives you a lot. Of the, the meat and potatoes are right there. Got it. You, you have a full picture of who they are and how to process them through your conversation. And how many properties they own. I've got one that's got uh, four properties. Mm -hmm. One's 1. 1.8 million. The rest trickle down to 800, 500, and 300. So Hopefully they want to sell something. <laughs> I'll take you one of the know. four. I don't That's care. The whole thing is you never know what properties they want to unload. So the next question is for Gus. Could yeah. you could you elaborate a little bit more? So with the sequence, you have uh, sending the emails that are not only um, home value but also the market report. Um, these are um, emails that we are sending out from any lead that responded to our ads or any anyone that is within the system? Yeah, so the, all, all of our emails go out to your entire database uh, that you put into the fellow platform. Every 15 days, 24 times a year, your database is getting touched from a home value focus. And so every 15 days, they're getting a different rendition of a home value focused email. Uh, we are constantly, we'll probably send out 20 million emails this month across our platform. So we're constantly testing subject lines and copy and button places to ensure inboxing and de deliverability. So every 15 days, we're changing that copy. It's not super redundant, um, but it is always going to be focused around home value and getting you know what their home value is worth. And then when they click on that, then they land into the custom dashboards that we showed earlier, which is then where we show that value um, for you as the agent within your market, all that good stuff. Okay, what do what do they receive after you see them? They're landing on the dashboard. You see them, they're engaging. What is the next sequence? What do they receive? They continue to receive that. It's almost like a credit karma update. So mm -hmm. um, the different call to actions on the dashboard will identify what their level of attention are. So whether they're just clicking into their dashboard and seeing home value month after month is going to be a different intention than when someone clicks on a, a button that says, hey, I have interest in getting a cash offer. I have interest in selling my home or contacting a professional. Those hand raisers we're going to bring to you in your CRM. But regardless, it's an evergreen nurturing campaign that's going on. So in the background, every 15 days, they're still getting that. So whether you have a past client or someone you never talked to, they're still getting touched from a home value focus there. Perfect. All right. Well, I already scheduled a call with you later on okay. today. So Perfect. Thank okay. you so Great. much. Yes. Yeah, of course. You got it. Awesome. Blanca, you have a question? Yeah. So would you recommend buying lists of, of sell, you know, potential sellers or do you usually do it from people that have clicked on your ads or how do you, because I heard you say something about going through Mojo and I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so you don't mind okay. me elaborating. So that was just a poll neighborhood. So what, my database is mainly uh, full of is people that have came to my, you know, clicked on my street text ad, what's your home really worth, right? And and raise their hand that way. Like we have 6,600 or 66,000 leads that came from street text over the last four years. So you're talking tons of people, but they're also buyers, but they're also sellers. But some of them, you know, that need to buy also need to sell. So, um, so it's just a mixture of everybody. They literally just come come in to your database, and if you are a lead gen fool like you should be, um, that's who they're digging through. So, as far as just buying a list of sellers, like I probably wouldn't do that, but um, I definitely would run ads 
what's your home really worth? And you can actually run them to go directly to um, the fellow, what's your home really worth page. So um, that way they're automatically like in there. So um, you can do that or uh, just let them do their thing inside your database if you already have a, a good sized database. If not, yep, we've done pull neighborhoods out, pop them in there, you know, and then they'll start getting emails too. Okay. So you wouldn't, okay, thank you. And can you just also just tell me really briefly, what is Mojo? Is Does that kind of like help you with all yeah, the- Mojo is just, Mojo's just a dialer, but they have a specific neighborhood feature, which like Lofty has a neighborhood feature, like a bunch of different programs have a neighborhood feature. Uh, I just use them because I learned them from Herb Rim and they do connect directly to follow-up boss and I'm an automation girl. So I need- automation so anyway so when you do one thing another thing happens and another thing happens so that's why I used mojo but like um there's you could go to your title company and say I want a, a neighborhood you know I want to pull this farm out with names emails phone numbers addresses and they can do that for you and you you pay for that so okay. um, and then you just get that into your CRM and then mo and then fellow starts to um work with them directly too okay thank you I'm just gonna throw this up one more time, just while we before before we hop off. That way. Okay, John, you have a question. Uh, real quick, I was just wondering if you uh, have like a, a, a unsubscribe ratio. Do people once they they do they have that option or do they? What, what they do, you... do have an unsubscribe option. I do not track that because I I focus on the positive, not the negative. Yeah. No, that's all right. I'm just curious. No, yeah, I don't. I don't try to see how many people unsubscribed. I see how no, many people raise keep their hand. The tunnel. <laughs> awesome. Sarah hopped on the call. Sarah, are you out there? Can you unmute? I'm here. I'm walking my dog, but I'm here. Hi. Hi. Yes, yeah, Sarah is um, my ISA, and she makes my calls. So she's in my follow-up boss digging around, and I feel like she really likes fellow because she knows a lot more information and has a better conversation with these people. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. So much more info from it. Um, so much more like activity happening. It's like... It's like just all the all the little goodies that you want to know so that you can have a really good conversation and build rapport with people. So I really like it. It's been really helpful. Awesome. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah. All right, all right yeah. guys. Does anybody else have any other questions? We have two minutes left and we got to hop into the VIP room where we're going to press the buttons. Um, scan the QR code. If you're gonna meet right can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, my question is, so for the people that we only have emails to, um, like, do they have to, so they have to get an email and they have to enter their address to, for, for the process to start? You know what I mean? Yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead, Gus. Yeah. So you're, so what's going to happen is, is, and this is where we kind of set ourselves apart from other home value tools that are in the market right now is we don't require a home address to be able to target them every 15 days. We will still send them an email regardless of whether you have a home address listed or not. And so if they don't have an address listed, what they're going to get is something a little bit more ambiguous. It's just going to say your home. And when they click on this see my home button within that initial email, what's going to happen is they're going to land into what I like to call our spider web. And that's when they're going to get a pop-up box that's going to look a little something like when it loads. I'm like, I got to give me a call to Spectrum today or something. Um, confirm your address, whether they have it or whether we have it or not. And then through that integration with your uh, CRM, we're going to automatically update that address within your database for you. That was a good question, though, Vivian. Awesome. Okay. So um, Marsha is saying, so fellow works best for someone with lots of prospects. Um, obviously, the more you have, the better odds you have, right? <laughs> the better engagement you're going to have, but you don't need a ton. They work with people that have less than a thousand, right? Yeah. Uh, like ind individual agents. But if you don't have a ton, talk to me, hop into VIP and I will help you fill that database. So. <laughs> Exactly. I like, yeah. I like that. But um, awesome. but yeah, Thanks, you could definitely, yeah, you could definitely we work with 
we work with people that have 500 contacts and we work with people that have 2 million contacts in their database. So um, our goal is to just uncover those homeowners. And at the end of the day, the equation that we look at is not necessarily conversion. It's not really anything. It's that 5% of your database will list their home every 12 months, whether that's with or without you. So take that number, whether you have 500 or 2 million and do that, do that math and do that equation and see how fellow could help you identify more of that 5%. Awesome. All right. Thank you again cool. for hopping right. on, guys. Uh, Bye, y'all. I can't wait to um, see you guys next month. We have a whole new lineup that I will be disclosing uh, as soon as I get it ready. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we already have it scheduled. So I will see you next week on the call and see you in VIP in a minute. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Have an amazing week.